There are so many stories in the, let's say, in the spiritual world, the religious world, the philosophical world. Hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of stories. Probably thousands or more. I was reading one of them, about one of them, in a book this afternoon. Uh, some of you may have heard of the, some of you heard of the Sammy Ling Monastery? You heard of Sammy Ling? It's a huge, big Tibetan monastery in Scotland. No? no very yet. famous in, very famous in uh, Britain. And uh, I was reading a book by a philosopher who visited it to interview a lama about Buddhist belief systems there. And he said he was very disappointed to see that there's a stupa there. You know the stupa? Buddhist stupa. And there was a notice by the stupa that said that if you made a donation of at least 500 pounds, hmm. or 550 when you would, after you died, hmm. you'd been cremated, your ashes would be placed in this stupa, and this would guarantee you an improved rebirth, an improved reincarnation. Wow. I mean, it didn't say whether the improvement got better and better and better, depending on how people don't. <laughs> So there's a lovely story, you know, a story for the there's rebirth and a story that I could affect my rebirth by making a donation to a Tibetan Buddhist monastery. And I was thinking afterwards that that story is very like, you know, if we go back into about, what, about 1200, 1300 AD in Europe, you could do a very similar thing. You could buy an indulgence from a priest, couldn't you? Mm. And if you bought an indulgence, it meant that you then spent less time in purgatory. And presumably, again, the more money you paid to the priest, the less time you had to pay in purgatory. <laughs> so there's just two quite similar stories out of the endless, endless, endless stories that we weave about meaning, about purpose, about what the meaning of life is, about how life works. And of course there are also endless experiences, endless experiences that we can generate in ourselves. We can have past life therapy. You can even have future life therapy these days. Well. <laughs> Past life therapy is enormously popular. Future life therapy is also popular. I recently uh, took part in a conference in Germany where one of the other speakers was talking about the the mother of spaceship, or the UFO, as uh -huh. something's called, which is currently hovering above the planet, um, with benign, you'll be relieved to hear that, benign and kindly aliens in it who want to help us, but they're not able to help us unless we ask for them, because they can't force the help on us. Mm -hmm. And when, I think it's 144,000 of us, can be gathered together to ask them for their help, then they can help us. Oh. So there's another story. Wow. <laughs> and then several other people at this conference seem to be adept at talking to the dead. <laughs> it's actually easy. Talking to the dead is very easy. <laughs> Getting an answer is different. It's passing, it's passing on their replies. Exactly. Also, but they were also very adept at passing on their replies, so there's a long nice story. I'm, I'm here for a, the weekend, you know, we could just sit here. In two and a half days, we wouldn't have time to go through all of these stories. I mean, one thing that is quite clear about the human mind is that we are incredibly
incredibly creative when it comes to making both stories and experiences. So I may have a story about leaving my ashes in a Buddha's stupa. I may have the experience of talking to the dead in my head. And this evening isn't about any of that. This evening is about that which is, if you like, underneath or beneath all of that. It's what cuts through all of that. What we're here to, well, what I'm here to talk about. I don't know what maybe you're here to talk about UFOs and Buddhist rebirth. But what I'm here to talk about, you know, whatever we call it, non duality, liberation, awakening, whatever one you want to call it. What I'm here to talk about is, if you like, that which sees through all of the other stuff. That which sees that all of that stuff is a story, is an appearance. If you like, what we're here to talk about is that out of which all of these very colourful stories arise. And the problem is, we're here to talk, or I'm here to talk about that. The problem, in a way, is that we can't talk about it. It's almost like there's nothing that can be said about it because it's beyond words. So these other stories, we can talk about endlessly because they're about phenomena, they're about experience, if you like, the experience of the mothership. And so words are very adequate to deal with them. And as our imaginations create more and more and more layers to these stories and more and more complexities to these stories, language is a wonderful servant. And language is a wonderful way of expanding these narratives further and further and further and further, which is of course what happens. You must have noticed this if you spend even 10 minutes on the internet dabbling in these kinds of stories. And the first thing you notice is that they, they kind of, um, they grow and grow and grow and grow in complexity. And language is a wonderful way of um, doing this. But language is hopeless and helpless for what we're talking about. Because what we're talking about is that which underlies all phenomena, that which underlies all happenings, that which underlies all experience, all feelings, all narratives. So really, there are, there are no words for that. All we can do is talk around it. All we can do is try to use metaphors to give some kind of sense of it. But how, how do you describe? Let's say, that, let's say that seeing liberation, let's say that seeing through non-separation, seeing through separation, let's say awakening is about the recognition of the silence and the emptiness that underlies everything. Everything is either so far mentioned this evening. But I've just used the, pretty much the only two words that can be used of that. And they're not very good. I've just used the words silence and emptiness. Their language comes to an end. Silence and emptiness don't even get it. If I, if I was to suggest that liberation is a kind of resting in silence and emptiness, which is good a way to describe it as anything. It's not good, but it's as good as any other description. Liberation or awakening or seeing through separation is resting in silence and emptiness. Well, what does that tell us? Nothing, really. It certainly doesn't sound very appealing. It doesn't to my mind, anyway. 
silent and fluted, it's not terribly exciting. And yet, having used those two words, that's about it. You know, we haven't got very close with those, but there's nothing else that's going to get any closer. So, in the words of I recently, I was asked to read um, a new book by an Australian about, but it's loosely about non-duality, and the publishers wanted me to read it and make a little comment on it. And I thought it was really rather good. I would recommend it if you want to read a book in, in English, which is partly about this, it's not wholly about this, but at one point the author is trying to describe, is talking about liberation or awakening, and he's saying, well, when it comes to describing it, we're buggered before we start, really. Those are his words, and I couldn't do better than say them myself. You know, here we are for some of us, which is what I'm here for two and a half days, I don't know how long you're here for, but I'm here for two and a half days, to talk about something which, frankly, we're buggered before we start, because there is nothing to be said about it which can possibly hit the mark. Whereas if we were here to talk about the Bardos of Tibetan Buddhism, for example, or stories of rebirth, well, we can talk about that endlessly and never run out of description. So, although we're buggered before we start, we're going to have a try and we'll see where. suggesting this, that although this is beyond words, which might sound, which might make it sound unendurably complex, actually it's incredibly simple. The reason why it's beyond words isn't because it's incredibly complex, it's because it's incredibly simple. It's so simple that there's nothing in it that words can catch hold of. Sum it up. I feel I've really already said it, but to sum it up, we're going to try to give a description of non-separation, or awakening, liberation. It's seeing that there is only emptiness out of which everything apparently arises. Like a waking dream. At night, when we go to sleep, there is only emptiness. Dreamless sleep is emptiness. And then out of that emptiness, there arises a nighttime dream. All sorts of phenomena. There's just emptiness. You go to sleep, dreamless sleep, there's just emptiness. And then before the morning, virtually certainly, whether you remember it or not, out of that emptiness or dream of sleep will arise fullness. A dream about something. A dream about all sorts of things. Full of people and buildings and who knows what, animals and transport and you may be <coughs> flying through the sky in an aeroplane or possibly, <laughs> possibly not in an aeroplane. Who knows what might happen in a dream. And then in the morning you wake up and it's quite obvious that no matter how convincing that dream was when you were in it, when you wake up in the morning, it's quite obvious that it was a dream that arose out of nothing. And at the end of the dream, when you woke up, it all fell back into nothing. And that's as good as a metaphor, that's as good a metaphor as we're going to get for this. That's what we're talking about here, that's what this is. It's only a metaphor, but it's probably the best metaphor there is to say that this is a waking dream.